Hello, this is Alex Metricardi, Chief Marketing and Public Relations Officer for Living Branches, and today is Friday, June 5th. Welcome to Ed Brubaker, our President and CEO, and we're here again, of course, with another one of our weekend videos. I think we should call them weekend, not Friday, because that's when people see them. That's right. Friday already again. Wow. Amazing. And maybe just a note for people who do like to check our test results on the website. We're going to be revamping the way that we display these as we are testing more and more people and people are changing from negative to positive and positive to negative, it's getting harder to track all of that. So just to summarize, in Living Branches, the only place right now where we have any residents testing positive for COVID, that would be on Doc Terrace. Um, this week, we did test residents in Parkview at our Satterton campus. We had previously tested residents in healthcare at Satterton. Of course, we've tested residents in Harmony House at Doc Woods. Everyone there is negative. So the only positive cases that we have are at Doc Woods in our healthcare areas there. Unfortunately, we have had a fairly significant number of people now pass away in Doc Terrace, um, which is difficult for residents, family, and staff, of course. But we have some maybe perhaps more positive news coming out of Doc Terrace um, with the results of testing that we've done there. And Ed, I know we were just talking about this in our um, coronavirus response team meeting, but we, test, we retested 20 people in Doc Terrace um, who had either been negative or now had shown symptoms before and weren't showing them now. And of those 20, 18 are testing negative for the second time. So we can officially talk about those persons as recovered, at least right now. Yeah, that's right. And, and that is, is very positive news, Alex, and what we were hoping for and what we experienced a few weeks ago in Harmony House. And, and it was a matter of time till we got there in Doc Terrace. Uh, the, the numbers of persons uh, that we have that are still waiting for the first of their, what we hope to be two tests and hopefully both negative, uh, I think we have right around eight persons right now in that category. So hopefully over the next week or two, they will get to the point symptomatically that we can say it's now time to take them to their first test, hopefully their first negative test, to get to their second negative test so we can get to the place that we can say that Doc Terrace uh, is all negative uh, at that point in time. So we're, we feel like we're getting to that place, um, but uh, it hopefully will be soon, but it, it has been quite a journey uh, to get there. I did appreciate the um, story that we heard today of the resident who was in Doc Terrace who had previously tested uh, positive and then tested negative. And as he was getting his second test, he was hoping very much that that test would be positive so he could continue to stay in Doc Terrace as he's having such a good experience. <laughs> yeah, I think it was even specifically on one of the wings of Doc Terrace. And uh, he's, uh, he's a fun, fun man and he uh, really appreciates the good care and uh, didn't want to leave his friends really. And so um, he did get his wish, but uh, Eventually, we uh, hope that he will also be negative and, and get back, back to a bit more normalcy uh, at, at Doc Terrace. I think everyone will be ready for that. Yes, absolutely. Well, as w this is the part where we talk about questions um, from families and residents, and I've had a lot of questions this week, and they have all been around one topic. And that is when can we come and see our parents or when can I see my kids or my grandkids? Um, so visitation is of course the big topic that people are interested in, especially as Montgomery County and Bucks County are now moving to yellow in the pandemic guidelines. So why don't we talk about that a bit? Sure, absolutely. The thing we have to remember though is red, yellow, and green mean different things for us as a retirement community and as a place serving seniors than the general community. And if you go on Governor Wolf's reopening plan website, you will see that each category, red, yellow, and green, each says restrictions in place for congregate living. And for us, we would consider congregate living to be primarily focused on healthcare, skilled nursing, and personal care and of course, personal care memory uh, support. So when you look at that 
just on the face of it, it means nothing's changing even through green. And so it's easy to think about green and say, oh, that means go, right? That means going back to where we were and absolutely not. Even for the general public, it doesn't mean that either. There's still restrictions in green. So there will, there will be additional phases of green, if you will, too. Having said that, uh, as we think about that, we are focused on what are the things we can change. And frankly, for us in healthcare and personal care, really nothing between red and yellow. And as our uh, physician or our medical director, Dr. Hamowitz said, uh, we're red. <laughs> you know, it, the rest may be going to yellow, but as far as the rules for us, it's red. That's hard. We don't like to hear that. We want, don't want those restrictions to be on. But even going to green, the virus is not going. There are still residents, many residents and staff who have never had the virus. And so we need to be aware of that and try to protect people as much as we can. So we're trying to manage the, the reality of the physical needs, but also the emotional needs of everyone here, staff and residents but also balancing that with safety concerns too. And so we do have a task group working on that, a subgroup of the coronavirus response team and working at some things. I would also note there won't be huge changes for residential living either. Uh, we're working at those things and uh, should in the not too distant future be able to announce some things. But I would also reflect that some local communities during the past two months in residential living were much more restricted than we were. And so they're just starting to get to where we are now. Uh, I know one, they could not leave campus, period, end of story. And so we, we never got to that point. Um, and I think it's been okay for us. But the bottom line is we are still in restricted times and uh, we wish it were otherwise, but the virus is still here, even though it may feel like it's not. Um, after this today, I'm going to go to the Doc Woods campus and film a video with um, some of our infection control people where we will be reminding staff members to make friends with your face mask um, because you'll be wearing it for a significant portion of the future. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the, these things are not going away soon. And, and I think the worst thing that could happen is we think green means go and everything is okay. And, and we start not doing the things that are just smart, physical distancing, wearing a mask, all those kinds of things, washing our hands. That's a huge, huge thing. And so we, we just need to be aware of that as we move forward to, to be attentive to those things that to be honest, um, especially washing hands and keeping your, your hands off your face, those are good things pre-COVID as well. We just didn't do them as well as we should have. Well, and I think the other danger with um, negative test results is that can also lead to a sense of complacency. Oh, absolutely. And as we know, you can have a false negative. And so if you think, wow, I'm negative, and even if you still have symptoms, but you say, oh, well, the test said negative, you need to pay attention to your symptoms too, but also recognize that negative doesn't mean freedom. It means you weren't negative at that moment in time for the test. So really important. I think I would, the other thing I would note too is we, we actually implemented a, a plan for our staff in planning for their vacations this summer. And so they need to fill out paperwork that they've never had to fill out in the past to look at going on a vacation. And so there's been a few uh, that probably are gonna need to make some changes to their vacation. A lot of it has to do with air travel and those kind of things still being uh, problematic from our perspective. Uh, but people are still able to go um, to other places as well, uh, particular if they're driving and that kind of thing. But I guess the point I wanna make is from a working to protect our residents, we're we're trying to have a, another layer of review. And it's partly a reminder as well to staff to say, think about these things. Be safe, be careful. Think about how what you do could impact what goes on here. Uh, so that's something new we're doing as well. 
That's a really good point because I think, you know, as we talk about red, moving from red to yellow to green, that makes it sound like it's only one direction. Um, and it is entirely possible that we could be in yellow or in green, and based on what's happening in the county or even on our own campus, we're going back to more restrictive areas. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And I think in, in the news, we hear that as well. We don't think about that as much because we think it's going a march in the other direction. But yes, that's absolutely correct. And I think it'll be interesting, you know, there's been, this past week, there have been social, social distancing or physical distancing seems to essentially have been abandoned as um, so many people are out in the streets protesting um, or marching. Um, it'll be interesting to see if there are spikes in cases um, based on what's happening there. I've seen a lot of people wearing masks, so perhaps it won't be. Um, but yeah, this... I didn't see quite as many masks at the Lake of the Ozarks the other week, a Memorial Day weekend. And so that, that's the thing. And, and we heard stories about family interactions with the birth of children or whatever. And you just do something and then you think later, ooh, that was on protected contact and it can come back to bite you. So we just need to be very, very aware. Mm -hmm. This has been an amazing week. Um, I think in the United States, when we look at what's happening and what we're seeing in the news, um, and you know, we talk a lot of times about living branches is an oasis, but for all of us, I mean, I think it just seems like there's awareness of justice and equity issues that maybe is unprecedented, at least in my lifetime. What are you seeing and thinking? Yeah, and as I was thinking about this week and, and these past months and this year, <laughs> Uh, all these kind of things, you, you know, a lot of thoughts go uh, through your mind and a lot of emotions. You know, there's, this has been a very emotional time. Uh, it's, it can be hopeful at times too when you think, wow, we're making some progress, but then it can be frustrating and trying to make, navigate forward with all kinds of differing uh, things going on. And this has been a very long, I would say three months for all of us, staff and residents, and I know for myself. And, you know, just gauging my own emotions, um, you know, my wife would be able to reflect on some of that and myself too, as I evaluate that. And, and this morning, for some reason, it, it hit me uh, pretty hard. But I would also, as I reflect on that, say it's a, a combination of things too. Um, it just feels like in our country for a while already, um, we're focusing too much on what divides us as opposed to what brings us together. And that, from my perspective, is very disheartening. And I think we all have some responsibility to work at that. So that's been going on for a period of time. And then, of course, coronavirus these last few months has just been unbelievable. I've never experienced anything like this in my career, ever. And, and I would say most people could probably say that. So as I think about 2020, it's been quite the ride to date. So you have those things going on with uh, coronavirus. And I wanna share a, a, a thing that a friend of mine had sent me uh, about kind of reflections on the year. And uh, so maybe I'll, I'll read that. And then I also wanna reflect on what's just been happening more recently, like in the last two weeks. And part of the reason I wanna reflect on that is the reality is we live in this wider society. We have persons of color who work for us, who experience things on a day-to-day -day basis that I never experience as a white male, ever. We need to acknowledge that. We need to recognize that and, and, and say, this is happening. But first I wanna, wanna read this, um, Thing that it looks like a, a Kelly Dwight had uh, written it, or Leslie Dwight. What if 2020 isn't canceled? Some of us would like it to be, boy, that's for sure. But what if 2020 isn't canceled? What if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw, that it's finally time to force us to grow. A year that screams so loud, finally awakening us from our ignorant slumber. 
a year we finally accept the need for change, declare change, work for change, become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other further apart. 2020 isn't canceled, but rather the most important year of them all. And I thought, wow. That's nice. Till I read that, that was not what I was thinking about 2020. I can assure you of that. Because some of the things that we've been observing um, over the last couple of months with coronavirus, but couple that with what has been going on in this country for some period of time. And, and I frankly feel a need again as a white male to declare right here on this video that what I experience in this great land of ours is very different than many persons and particularly persons of color. And I, I just feel like I need to acknowledge that. I'm not forcing other people to, but I need to. My experience is different. I'm in the position of power. And it was driven home to me in so many different ways. You know, when you see the killing of this uh, black man, George Floyd, and what does that impact have on black persons in America? very different than what impact it has on me. And I think we need to find ways of putting ourselves in the shoes of other people. This is not about politics. In fact, I don't, this is not gonna be a political discussion because it's not about politics. This is about justice. This is about mercy. This is about doing the right things. And I really, really do believe that. I feel we need to acknowledge that though too, because these things impact our organization. They impact our relationships and we need to be aware of that. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I was watching a video that Malcolm Jenkins had done and frankly, I was disappointed when he left Philadelphia because I, th I thought he was a great football player, but I also admired him because he was a person that spoke for what he believed. And I will have to admit, many times in my own life, I've hesitated to speak because I didn't want to offend or I didn't want to come across incorrectly. But I always had this respect, frankly, for people like him. And when I was watching that video, this man, by all intents and purposes, has been a very successful football player. He probably makes more in a game than I make in a year. But his deep sadness, his deep sadness on that video because of the injustice that I will never experience in this country just really hit me very hard. The other hit, thing that hit me uh, probably a year and a half ago was Gwen Eagleson, who's a, a resident of uh, Living Branches on the Dock Woods campus. She had recommended The Color Purple at the Theater Horizon. It was playing in December of 2018. And so Lucy and I had gone to, to that, and it was amazing. And I, I said to Lucy, I said, when Brandy comes home uh, from Tennessee for Christmas, we need to take her to that uh, play. And uh, we did, and it, it was emotional. You know, it's, it's one of those things I kind of joke, you know, sometimes you're, you're feeling emotion and you're, trying to hold it back and did anyone see that type of deal, you know, that, that kind of thing. And that's what I experienced because it was powerful. And, and all black cast talked with some of them. Uh, we were there with Brandy on the second to last night and it was powerful. And just speaking with them of the connections they made uh, with each other and the cast as well, it was just, it was amazing. It was just amazing. But it reminded me again that I will never have that experience in this country about um, th that kind of um, experience of how other people relate to you. Uh, now the story was not just about race relations, it was about a whole lot more, uh, but it just reminded me again. And so just recently there was a, a video that came out from Theater Horizon of the cast. And uh, we wanna share that today as the ending for this video. And I. I know this video took a little bit different track this week, but I really do feel that it's important for us to acknowledge 
what's going on in the world. My role as a leader of Living Branches, as we see sometimes in sports, stick to sports. No, we as leaders, we as people in society, we can speak into things as we see fit. And I, as a leader in this organization, have some level of responsibility, I believe, to point out things that we need to work at in this society, that we need to work at in this organization. And uh, so it's, it's just been kind of a, an interesting and emotional week for me. Our daughter lives in Philadelphia. A lot of things were going in, on in there. And so this song from The Color Purple is what we want to end with this week. And it, it's powerful. And one of the things for me that's so powerful about it is it talks about God being in all of us, mm-hmm. being in all of us. And I think that's what we as Christians would claim to believe. But if you think about it, if you think about God not being out and about there, but God is in all of us, I hope that makes a difference as to how we treat each other. And so we want to end with this video and certainly if you have any reflections before we go into that, but uh, it's a, a pretty powerful message. I, th- I think that maybe is exactly the thing that disturbed me the most about the video we saw um, of Mr. Floyd and the officers on his neck is they clearly didn't see him as a human being because you could never treat someone that you truly valued as a human that way. And if we as Christians believe that God is in all of us, we can't behave like that. Yeah, that's exactly right. We really can't. Well, I'm so, looking forward to seeing this. Thank you. All right, that uh, is the end of our video, but we do want to end uh, with this message of, of hope, but also of love and God being within each of us. So enjoy and have a good week. Dear God, dear stars, dear trees, dear sky, dear peoples, dear everything, dear
I don't think I feel old at all. I think this is the youngest us ever felt. Yes. I Stay safe, stay healthy.